I'm Simon Maxwell. I'm director of the Overseas Development Institute, which is Britain's leading independent think tank on international development and humanitarian issues. Well, you know, it's an interesting thing that uh, the UK produces at the moment about 10 tonnes of carbon per head. Uh, the poorest countries, Ethiopia is a good example, produces 0.1 tonne of carbon per head. That's 100 times less. Uh, that means that somebody uh, born in Britain this year, um, there'll be a hundred before the average Ethiopian uses as much carbon or produces as much carbon as that person has used before they're out of nappies, I mean, by the end of the first year of their life. So there are enormous disparities in the contributions that different countries are making to climate change. Uh, and that's why it has to be a shared responsibility, but one in which the developed countries uh, take the lead. The thing that is really affecting poor people now, and ODI research shows this very clearly, is not so much climate change, but the measures we're taking to try and mitigate climate change. Um, uh, biofuels is a very good example. We're in the middle of what looks like uh, th uh, the first world food crisis of the 21st century. Um, and there are many factors behind that, but one of them is certainly the fact that 80 million tonnes of maize from the US are being uh, put into biofuels and that the European Union has put quotas which also require 2.5% of all fuel to be derived from uh, biodiesel or bioethanol. Uh, that has an impact on poor people. Carbon sequestration through uh, forest projects has an impact on poor people. Um, and those are having much more impact, I think, uh, we think at ODI, than uh, climate change so far. Nobody thinks that uh, the solution to climate change lies in the free market. Uh, uh, Nick Stern, when he produced his report on the subject, despite, described climate change as the biggest market failure in history. And of course that's true because there is uh, no price on carbon, for example, what economists call the external diseconomies have not been factored into anybody's equations, whether it's government uh, or, or business or even the NGOs. Every aspect of economic activity, including aviation, but also power generation, manufacturing services, needs to reflect in its planning and in its pricing the cost of carbon. So at some stage in this process we will need to bring e e aviation in. Uh, there are lots of other things we need to do as well, of course. We need to look at the way in which the European uh, emissions trading system is working and make sure that it is not overly subsidised and generates a proper price of carbon. Uh, people say that in the first round um, the allocations to power companies and others were too high and the price of carbon as a result was too low. Uh, we need to get the price of carbon up to a realistic level. So yes, uh, there needs to be a root and branch analysis and you know, there's no doubt that this is urgent. Uh, if we don't have a clear framework in place by next year, it'll be difficult to follow up when the Kyoto Protocol arrangements run out in 2012. We don't have 50 years to save the planet, uh, we don't have 20 years to save the planet, we have uh, uh, less than 10 years to put in place the arrangements we need. Those are going to be very, very tough decisions for all of us. When Douglas Alexander talk, gave a big speech on climate change at the LSE recently, he framed it in the context of a conversation about global social justice. I thought that was a very interesting way to frame it because it raises the question of what we mean by global social justice. and. In all the discussion about social justice in the UK context, for example, there are three or four key elements. Um, equal rights, um, equal citizenship, uh, equal opportunities, uh, a reasonable degree of equality in the distribution of outcomes, um, and a social minimum. Now, put that in the UK context, and it's a conversation about participation and democracy and social protection and about income distribution within the UK, put it in a global context and it becomes a much more radical agenda. Uh, do we really think that poor people have adequate voice in these discussions and adequate um, uh, uh, authority, if you like, adequate weight in the decision-making process? Do we think that rich countries are accountable to poor countries? Do we think that there are adequate mechanisms in place to protect the livelihoods of the poor? Do we think the distribution of income is in the world uh, is right? And it's quite clear the answer to every single one of those questions is no. So those of us who believe in development and those of us who believe in poverty reduction start with a very, very strong sense of what social justice means. And what we need to do then is to take that through 
uh, into all the different elements of the policy conversation we have, the world is an incredibly unequal place. Um, and uh, part of our project, if you like, in tackling the need for a better and more socially just world is to reduce that level of inequality. Uh, climate change is just one more item on the to-do list, although I have to say, of course, a very important one.